Today's lesson is going to focus on basic right hand technique for claw hammer friendly style banjos. So a lot of folks have different names for what they what they call this technique. Uh, I personally I call it a bum ditty. There are other people that call it like a boom chicka. There are people that call it a bum ditty but they spell it different. Um, it really doesn't matter. At its core uh, it's the the same thing. So it consists of just three parts. There's a strike, a strike, a brush, and a pop with your thumb. So it's typically done at least starting with a single finger and your thumb. So you can choose between, you know, usually these two fingers, uh, which one's gonna be more comfortable for you. I have never seen anyone use their ring finger for a bum diddy, but hey, anything can happen. So, um, me personally, I use my index finger because it just is comfortable for me. I started using my index. At some point, I used my middle for a long time. And then, uh, I don't know, about 10 years ago, I just wasn't getting the sound I liked. And I ended up getting um, uh, a, uh, using my, my index again. So anyway, it doesn't really matter. Whichever is more comfor comfortable for you. So you can use your fingernail. Um, some folks will use a, uh, like a, a finger pick. Uh, these are like something that a, uh, you know, uh, somebody would play for bluegrass, but in bluegrass, you would put it on this way. But if you wanted to do, use one for claw hammer, you can put it on backwards and it acts as like a fingernail for you. There are some people that... I'm personally not a fan of doing it that way. Um, they also make these little thimbles that go on your finger. I'm not sure. There are several makers out there uh, that 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 make those, um, but I've never used one, so I can't speak to to how well they work. I know some folks seem to really like them. So, um, but anyway, so choose your finger, choose your style of pick or your fingernail, however you feel like. And really, let's take a look at, you know, what makes a bum ditty a bum ditty. So like I said, it's this, it's a basic strumming pattern. But that strike note, you can make changes in the melody with. So whenever we think about breaking it down into the constituent parts, I want you to think of, I know it's a three motion uh, uh, technique, but I want you to think of two practice exercises. And your first one is going to be bringing your, hitting your, your strike note with your finger and bringing your thumb down. So there are brief tangent about this. I am a very huge advocate of coming home, so to speak, with your thumb every down motion. You'll notice on my strike I'm not sounding my drone. What I'm doing there is coming home and my thumb taps it and it orients my hand so that I can move around to different strings a lot cleaner. I used to use a floating thumb. I did it for years, and I, 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 see, I see folks struggling with it out there, um, and, you know, it's... I'll say this. Do you have to bring your thumb home? No. Will it help you? Yes. And I say that coming from a perspective of a guy who spent many years using a floating thumb. And I kept watching all these really great players that I respected, and a, a vast majority of them were, were always coming home. And I thought, what is the deal with that? Why is everyone doing that? And started looking into it and found that, you know, it's really just orient, orient your hand. And so I decided I was going to buckle down and I was going to tighten up my playing and it took my my playing to a completely different level, um, 100%. But 
I had a years long bad habit to break, which was not coming home with my thumb. So if you can get this down from the beginning, it will help you greatly because I felt like I had to learn, relearn every single song that I knew. And it, it was not, it, it was challenging. I felt like I didn't want to play in front of anyone for almost a year because it, I, I was just my, broke my brain every, oh, I haven't played Cumberland Gap in a few months and I'd bust it out and I couldn't play it anymore. And I had to relearn pretty much everything that way. So try to do it from the beginning. I liken it to say someone challenges you to walk down a dark hallway and they have a piece of tape up the middle. It's pitch black. You can't see. Maybe they're looking at you with night vision goggles and they say, can you walk down a hundred foot hallway, walk down the dead middle. I'm going to start you on the middle and I want you to walk all the way down this hallway and you need to stay on that line the whole time. Can you do it with some practice? Probably, but is it going to help you if maybe you could reach your arm out and touch a wall as a point of orientation? I think if your fingertip could brush the wall and you knew that you were on that line, you would have a much easier time walking down that line the whole hundred feet. You could probably do it the first time without even, without even trying. Um, so tangent over, that is my take on it. I, I highly, highly recommend it. Um, but again, you could do whatever you like. Um, it's not 100% uh, uh, re required to, to play the style of banjo. So here we go. The strike motion. That's all. Just get your thumb coming down with your note every time. Just try different strings. second part is the one I actually want you to practice first. All you're going to do is this. Let me move in a little closer for my thumb here. I'm not pulling on my string. I'm not even really using my thumb muscle at all. All I'm doing is brushing, my, th my thumb is catching, and then I'm pulling it away. You don't have to pull, you don't have to tug on the string, it's, you're, you want it to be so that when you pull, you want your hand to land in such a way that when you pull your hand away, you're gonna sound that note. So then, once you just practice this for a while, that's really easy to do, right? I mean, like anybody can do this. I could hand this to my five-year-old and say, hey, just take this finger and brush and pull it off. And then he'd be able to pull it off. Once you get that down, you just need to add your strike is all. So now you got, and now you have a bum ditty. That's it. It's super easy. That's the basic strumming pattern for claw hammer banjo. So, once you get that down, your strike and your brush and your pop, you can get a little experimental with it. Maybe you're gonna take your, we're gonna go from our G string to our D string as our strike, it's alternate. It's gonna give you an alternating bass note. So let's do this. some chords, see what happens. So that's really all there is to it, to get started anyway. Um, claw hammer, it all in that it seems very simple from the outset when you're looking at what I just did there, you're like, well, that's not hard. That was just bumping around on some strings. You will find that, you know, should you, should your, uh, your banjo journey take you into more advanced songs, more advanced playing, 
you will find yourself not quite doing that classic bum ditty so much. Um, you will definitely use pieces of it, um, and still you still will use bum ditties, but um, there are a lot of other techniques involved, drop thumbing, alternate string pull-offs and hammer-ons, um, you know, just lots of different uh, techniques that get into it. Um, and, you know, but at its core, your playing will revolve around that pattern, that sort of beat um, with the bum ditty. So for now, remember, practice first. Get this part down. time trust me on this one um so that's all i uh, tabs and lessons are always going to be free to you there is a tip jar should you feel so inclined but what's important is playing some better music so once you get a little better here at your right hand technique um you know come back i'm hopefully going to have uh more videos as, as far as just you know technical style uh you know you know technical parts of playing rather um I do have some beginner claw hammer lessons. I also have intermediate and advanced. I have um, uh, some guitar lessons, flat picking, uh, some different ver variations on finger style. And uh, once I get my mandolin back from uh, Luthier, uh, who has it right now, I am going to be doing um, some mandolin lessons. So stay tuned. Uh, there's always free stuff coming and uh, hope this gets you started. Have a good one.